a, a lot of people don't know, I'm sure of our listeners, your whole whole story. But it started a few years ago where you trained your pug to do the Hitler salute as a joke. Can you yeah. walk us? I, I imagine there's hours you can go into, but can you give us a, a version of that? I'll try, I'll try and give like this short postage stamp version, but it's like uh, my girlfriend, it was my girlfriend's pug. She's my wife now, but my girlfriend at the time was always going on about how cute he was. And take, was take as much time as you need. Sorry to interject. But if you want to lay out as much as you want, it's a long show and it's a funny story. Oh, no, that's cool. And, uh, well, basically, she would even, like, shove the pug in my face, going, look at his little face. Look how cute he is. And I'm like, fuck off. Like, I'm the <laughs> fucking dog. And other than and one day, I was, like, giving him a treat, and he lifted his paw because he gives you a paw whenever he does it. And I went, ah, that kind of looks like a little salute. And then uh, <laughs> a, a, a light bulb appeared above my head, and I just thought... <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? Be really fucking funny. <laughs> and so, yeah, the little, the little cute, lovely, the little cute, lovely animal, and then six million. You know, oh. <laughs> like that, and I thought, that's that's hilarious. That that'll upset her to no end. But the problem is, is uh, he didn't do it all the time. He wasn't fully properly trained. There was sometimes he did yeah. it, sometimes he didn't do it, and I didn't want to take the dog in front of my in front of my girlfriend and then try and get him to do it and he doesn't do it and it's like daisy work just completely ruined right so i decided <laughs> to film all the times he actually did do it and then i made it into a video i uploaded it on youtube with like no intention of it going anywhere i even gave it like a stupid title i only had eight <laughs> subscribers they were all friends of mine they were all people i knew <laughs> <laughs> so i thought ah there's no chance anyone's going to find this <laughs> so, but then it uh, ended up the, the plan was me and my girlfriend would like have little youtube nights we would put youtube on the tv in the living room and then we would watch videos and i was going to totally blindside her by going oh i know this i know this really funny video just you sit there <laughs> I'll, I'll put it on and then i was going to get my phone out and like film a reaction but before we even get a chance to do that i went to a uh, fan fest in iceland which is like Eve, Eve online the online space spreadsheets mm -hmm. game i was i was very yeah. very into that game back yeah. then so i went to iceland and while i was on the plane going to iceland someone found the video somehow still don't know how and then they posted it to reddit and it made it to the front page of reddit <laughs> right i didn't know so i've landed in a foreign country uh, so my phone is not not got signal i'm not mm -hmm. getting texts or anything no notifications i'm going around reykjavik i'm meeting up with my friends over there we went to the pub i got absolutely drunk like that and then i like stumbled back to my hotel room not realizing mm -hmm. that back home my fucking life has been burned down <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm running around trying to speak icelandic and shit man like <laughs> <laughs> not, not realizing that like hundreds of reporters are calling like my grandmother <laughs> and shit like that man right while i'm running around going hurdy gurdy gurdy running around <laughs> right? but then uh, but then i get back to i get back to the hotel room i pass out for a few hours i wake up feeling like shit I, i've like to f go to check my phone and i'm like oh fuck oh wait the hotel wi-fi connected to the hotel wi-fi and my phone just blew the fuck up man it's like you have like <laughs> shit tons of youtube messages you have 38 voicemails and like oh, that's shit, man, right? and then <laughs> and, and, like while i was just scrolling through them i only scrolled through them for like 10 seconds and then my girlfriend called me and i says what the fuck's going on what's happened and then she said why are there reporters at the door <laughs> <laughs> and i just went I don't fucking know. Is it the video? And then, yeah, I found out that the video went viral. And, oh, uh, no. This poor dog ruined your life. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah poor fuck dog. him. Yeah, fuck him, man. He get the nothing. Dog, everybody, the, the everybody, everybody I hope, I hope you just point. beat the shit out of him every day after this. <laughs> I, I do. I do. It's hard not to. There's a reason his face looks like that, you know. That's not a bug. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but ended up like... Uh, I just had fun in Iceland. I just thought, ah, fuck it, you know, it's done now. Uh, while I was actually, uh, Helmar Vigar was like the CEO of like, well, he was, he stepped down, but he was the CEO of CCP Games and it was in the middle of his like keynote speech, the big speech for like EVE Online Fan Fest. And I, I basically get an email from my job going, yeah, you're fucking fired. <laughs> so I was like, oh and I, so like he's giving his big speech and I'm turning around to all my friends going, I just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Not, man, and I'm letting them all like read the email. So I just thought, I fuck it. Kept, kept partying in Iceland. And they're all making jokes going, they're going to arrest you when you go back home. And I'm like, ah, no, they won't. 
<laughs> because it was one, it was one of those like if only you knew how bad things really were. You know? <laughs> but I ended up came home, got off the plane, came home to like reporters hanging around outside my house, they're taking pictures of me and trying to talk to me as I'm going into the house. Uh, I I then ended up speaking to the the local youths, shall we shall we say, and uh, told them if they see any journalists in the street to ask them very nicely to leave. <laughs> very Do you hire polite. thugs to run off the port reporters? <laughs> no, you don't hire them. It's just, no, it's, it's basically... Every, every oh, no, they work for free. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. In Scotland, the love of the game. Each, each area, you know, each housing estate or project or whatever you want to call it in America has its own street gang known as the Young mm. Team, right? And basically, if you they, do, they have this whole thing where they don't like you if you're not from there. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm familiar they're not, with that. They're, they're not from here. <laughs> so still ask them, ask them nicely to leave. And so for a few days, there was there was no reporters, no journalists, no nothing, mm. right? But then ended up, uh, we get a knock at the door, and I've I've just had three bongs yeah. <laughs> when we get this knock at the door, and then I open it, and it's the CID, like a criminal investigation. Department. Oh, yeah. you were those, looking the those, best that day, and and those were the two people that came at <laughs> the door. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> That's me being arrested. I look like a fucking hobo, man. <laughs> and that was, that was the thing that was in the papers. It's like, like no one even knows the crime, but everyone's looking at that picture just going, he deserves it. He deserves it. <laughs> you look, look at him. You look like that's the first time you've seen light. <laughs> you look like a newborn kitten. <laughs> well, I was recently unemployed, but... but uh, like you just... Like they're taking you out of like a, a prisoner of war camp. What had you been up to the, the, in the weeks prior to this? Because you look nothing, good today. Break you a bit. No, nothing. I got fired. <laughs> like I got fired. <laughs> I was sitting in the house smoking weed and doing nothing. All right, <laughs> all right. So, I can get on board with that. Yeah, hence the like unkempt beard and fucking just shit hair and everything. And also, I'm high as fuck. That's why my eyes look like tiny vaginas. <laughs> like so, it's quite bad. But ended up like uh, there was no reporters in the street. But the reason. But as you can see from that picture, suddenly there was reporters in the street. Yeah. And uh, my neighbors told me that they arrived with the cops. Yeah, of course. They came, yeah. they came like with the police. Now, they knew about your gang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. That was uh, it. But, yeah. but, the, but the thing is, whenever the police communicate with the press, they're not allowed to tell the press shit like that. Mm. Oh, this is the date and time we're going to have Yeah, someone slipped them 100 bucks. Blah, blah. Yeah, no, well, yeah, what happened was basically the cops broke the law. They're, they're supposed to have a record of every communication they make with journalists. There's no records. Like, my lawyer tried to get it, and they were like, no such thing exists. And it's like, oh, well, guess guess the journalists are fucking psychic then, you know? But mm. So, yeah, and I, I got arrested, and because of the nature of the crime, so it was a hate crime, uh, I got ridiculous. You sometimes you get taken down to the station, they book you and go, all right, fuck off. You'll, you'll get your court date in the mail. Right, yeah. but I got kept in because mine was classed as a very serious offence. So I'm yeah. sitting in sitting in cell, and I'm just like, all right, okay, I guess I'm having a fucking sleepover and in, <laughs> in jail tonight. And then, like in the middle of the night, I can hear just screaming coming down the hall, just screaming, right? And then I, I look out through the little porthole, and basically, the cops have got this guy in like the Superman carry. You know how where they've got him mm -hmm. in a full body harness, and they're just yep. carrying him like a big plank of wood down the hall. They throw him in the room, and I can hear them like kneeling on his back to undo the restraints, and then they just back out the room and slam the door. And this guy's screaming the fucking place down, punching walls, kicking the door. This is at like three, four in the morning when I'm trying to sleep, and I'm sitting, there, I'm sitting, punching the wall and shouting back, going, "Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> like screaming at him, and he's shouting shit out, going, "I've ruined my life! I've ruined my life!" and everything. And then, oh, no, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, like, I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sleep on it. That was interesting, <laughs> but uh, but ended up like the next morning we're getting like taken out to go at the courthouse, so we're all getting like you know shackled up and everything to get loaded onto the vans. And the porter, who's the guy that looks after the prisoners, he was very nice. He was a nice guy, and I said to him, "Going, who was that absolute roaster that you put into the cell?" next to me last night man he kept me awake all night and the guy just goes oh yeah he murdered his friend oh <laughs> Wait, what did he do to his friend murdered his friend like, murdered. Murdered. I, yeah killed him and, and i was like okay i understand why he's upset you know but yeah you know, man, he, he did ruin his, his own life. life but what about his friend's life just 
pretty much over. Well, he's a murderer. Yeah. More or less. Self never, yeah. never mind that. What about my sleep? Fuck them. I can't sleep. <laughs> that is yeah, the, the fridge gone. Here. You're never getting that sleep back, though. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, so, Max, Max. what was uh, what was the job that fired you instantly upon mm. learning that you'd taught your dog a, a salute? It was two. One wasn't really a firing. Like one of them was just a call center. Like it was like repairing. See how the little PDAs used whenever you make a card transaction. It was like repairing them. So mm -hmm. you had people calling you that couldn't speak English, and you were having to guide them through a complicated process <laughs> of like how to reset their pin machine and everything. So that was that was a fucking nightmare. And the other one was security, and that wasn't so much a firing. I just never got shifts. I think they yeah. just kind of went, ah, if we ignore them, we'll go away. Yep, and everyone was kind of like, "But I work for you." <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, and as soon as we can so, pull huh? you in, <laughs> just I, I think I said, "Am I am I not getting any shifts this week?" And I never got a text back, and I was kind of oh. like, "And it's not like a security boss to turn down someone that wants to do shifts." So I kind of, <laughs> I kind of just went, "All right, okay, that, that's <laughs> that then." But like, uh, ah. ended up as I was getting like taken out the cell, I'm getting handcuffed up and everyone, as I'm getting loaded into the van, the van's got like lots of little pods mm -hmm. in it for like each prisoner. As I'm walking by one of the windows, I see a friend of mine <laughs> like that, but he's, he's one of these friends where you only get to ever hang out with him for about two or three months at a time. Because then he's mm. then he's back in <laughs> for, like a, for like a while. So uh, ended up I was like, oh fuck, how you doing? You know, fancy meeting you here, like type of thing. <laughs> and we were sitting there, and we're like shouting through the little boxes at each other, like to try and talk to each other. And mm -hmm. he sort of says, allegedly, I uh, I uh, opened someone's face up with a meat cleaver. He basically slashed someone down the face, which is a, a very common thing in Scotland. Extremely common. Of yeah, nice. It's called a chib. That's why see yeah, that Scottish actor in like uh, Sons of Anarchy. That, yeah, that's he had the Glasgow that's style. What, that was that, his name. That's what they call him. They call him Chibs. Chibs, chibs. aye, because he had two chibs. Aye, oh, that's what it is. This a common that. thing. Oh, thank in you so much for that. What does oh. Chibs mean? Fuck chibs, talk. Chibs are slashed to in slash someone's face. Oh. Yeah, okay. and what, what he got was called the Glasgow grin because they cut a smile in his face. I didn't like that. Or he, does he have it for real? He's, yeah, it's real. Yeah, well, the guy who did it, I I didn't realize it was real when I watched that show or saw him in other things, and I'm like, God, I wish they would make that symmetrical. Like, because <laughs> one of them is lower. It's kind of a, a Glasgow smirk. Well, it's because it's because he was it's because he was struggling because they were cutting his yeah. face up. Yes, it's, not, it's not like the it was he was being mugged for DJ equipment. That was why they were trying to steal his DJ equipment from no, him. No man, and say what you're not going to go hold, hold still, man. You want it even? Yeah, you want it, even. <laughs> it, it makes him look very hardcore. I, yeah. Does it though? Yeah. He's got a feet. That's clearly not like something he was born with, like a hair lip. That's that's a violent chop or a slice. Well, there's two. Whenever you see someone with a slash on their face, like in Scotland, like some people go, "Oh, you look, you look really tough." But people in the know go, "You're not trustworthy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you did something. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, did something yeah. really bad. To well, what you know did what he do? This guy we just looked at. Like it, it seems like he was being mugged. Yeah, he was being mm -hmm. mugged. So but, you, he's falsely accused of being untrustworthy. That's true. That's true. That is true. Mm -hmm. But nine times out of ten, if someone has a slash, it's because they stole drugs or they snitched on someone or something like that. It's basically like a big punishment. It's them marking you, basically saying like untrustworthy. It's a scarlet letter on your face. That mm -hmm. essentially is what it is. Well, yeah. it's just wrong to give that to people who are trustworthy. Uh, no, I know. It's just, it's just a thing in Glasgow. It's been a thing I... in Glasgow for over 100 years. Yeah. The tradition. <laughs> it started yeah. with, they say, like, the cutthroat razors they used to carry around in, like, the 1800s and everything. It started with that. This is blowing me away, and I'm from the land of gunshots. Oh, no. Yeah. There's, a, there's a famous picture on, like, Socky Hall Street in Glasgow of, like, the razor, the razor gangs, as they're called. There was loads of different ones that you get all the way throughout Glasgow, and the razor was, like, you know, the weapon of choice because they're easy to hide, easy to hide mm -hmm. from the police and everything. You can hide them in the brim of your cap and all that type of stuff. But uh, they blew up around the 60s, 70s, and there's a very famous picture on uh, Socky Hall Street in Glasgow of a member of a razor gang walking up and trying to slash a police inspector. Mm. Like in, in broad daylight, no. The police is. Uh, hold on, I need to find this picture. The police inspector looks so hardcore. 
He's got like a cigarillo. There it is. There, that's the exact picture. He's still mm-hmm. got his smoke hanging out his mouth for the fucking. And then there's <laughs> other pictures of him just taking the guy to the ground mm-hmm. and everything as well. Yeah, that was that was the orange walk. It's a police. What is a police yeah. inspector? It sounds like a management position. Is, is he well, like? He's like a detective. Okay. Yeah, he's like he's so, like a detective. Yeah. So you're in prison. You found out your new neighbor is a murderer. Yes. What happens next? Well, I got taken to court. Uh, the next day and then that's when you just get put in like the big communal room with like all the other prisoners and stuff like that and mm-hmm. uh, while we're while we're sitting there chatting it ends up getting on to the oh what are you in for like <laughs> thing, right? and i'm like and i knew it was coming and i'm like all right here we go, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> like, but uh, one guy got caught with like 200 valium pills one guy got caught mm. growing weed in his house uh, one guy was just like violated his parole conditions blah 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 but then uh i guess to my friend who goes allegedly i opened someone's face with a meat cleaver and then it gets to me and i just start laughing and i'm like Haha, well uh i made a meme of, uh, <laughs> I have my girlfriend's pug nazi saluting for a joke and like three of the guys in there went that was you <laughs> 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 I thought I knew your face. And like, ah, yeah, that was me. But then my friend like leans over and whispers to me, going, See when you go in, don't tell people that because you will get battered. Well, <laughs> man, like, people, yeah, see, because it's not violent and it's something dumb that I'm in for, like they would just people would just kick the shit out of me. And of them. That but when, sucks. <laughs> but then so it got... not because they're anti it's because they're anti pussy crimes. Oh no! I can assure you that some some certain parts of Scottish prisons are very prone. To it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seems to be a common prison thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> everywhere. But there was a guy like sitting on the floor, and he looked about like eighteen, nineteen, or something like that. And like he's sitting, sort of curled up. This is obviously a whole new experience for him. I've been arrested before, like a bunch of times. It's always just been for fighting. Mm-hmm. I was outside the bar. I said something or someone said something, we threw punches, the police came, like basic stuff, nothing bad, you know, like split head, bust nose, bust lip, like basic shit like that. That, Those are the Mm -hmm. ones where you don't even get charged. They just keep you until you sober up and then the next morning open the doors and go, right, fuck off. (laughs) Because in Scotland, there is not enough time on earth to prosecute <laughs> all of the fights. <laughs> there's just, the drunken fights. The, dr- the drunken fights, yeah. There's just there's not enough time. Basically, Is there any other kind? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the police are leaving pressure. Both guys like, don't press charges, don't press charges. The other guy's not pressing charges. They're leaving lie and say, the other guy's not pressing charges. Cool people don't there. press charges. Yeah. What's your plan? They just, want, they just want you to leave. They just want you to get out. But this, this guy was sitting there and we were uh, and he turned around and says see if, see if it's your first offense like what, what what happens and then all these other like you know seasoned criminals were going if it's your first offense you'll get admonished admonished basically means <clears throat> the judge just chews you the fuck out and mm-hmm. he might give you a warning basically saying if you appear in front of me again blah 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 mm-hmm. and all that but then uh, no charges no nothing it still gets marked on your little record but you don't have mm-hmm. a criminal record mm. uh, and we, and that's then nice. that's when that's when someone went oh well it depends what did you do <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then he, he turns around and says i got caught with a kilo of cocaine and oh. fucking the whole room just erupted in laughter and it, i felt so bad because even i was doing it the whole room was looking at this <laughs> kid going no you're fucked you're absolutely <laughs> fucked. you're getting at least five at least five. <laughs> <laughs> and you just saw the color just drain from his face as he like he was cross-legged on the floor just staring at the ground and then oh. everyone sort of realized that we've just told this guy his life's over or some shit and then, and then people start going Oh well, maybe maybe not. If you've got a good lawyer, you know. <laughs> you never know, though. What like, guys, you know, uh, maybe judge, a, yeah. maybe a judge, a drunk barrister, who knows? <laughs> but I never checked up on him. I never got his name. But yeah, he for for a kilo of cocaine, yeah, he he got time. Oh he yeah, of course, time. dude. That was so scary because like. We've all watched television. We've all watched movies. And that's as close as 99.9% of us ever come to the real deal legal system. And maybe you see some like medieval movie where they're like, all right, well, off with his head. Just easy peasy. You're like, ha, we're a lot more careful these days with people's lives and 
even the times of their lives. We, we consider that before we just, oh, wait, no, nah, 30 years. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> Mr. Myers, you're next. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like when I watched him specifically, I've, I've told the story a bunch of times, but when I watched that judge put that uh, drug trafficker away for like a quarter century or more, whatever it was, I was like, oh, my God. This is the real courtroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the courtrooms I've ever been in up until today were like, there were some traffic charges yeah. present. No one in the courtroom with me there today was thinking about what they were going to do yeah. that afternoon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> everybody there was laser focused on the proceedings. You go to traffic court, there's people fucking around back there. They're not yeah. dressed appropriately. They're, they're, they're being silly. The judge might even have to, hey, 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 calm it down. Dude, it was a it was a fucking funeral in there. Everybody <laughs> was so afraid that you might like be the one that that judge like. Are you disrupting my courtroom? Who are you here to see anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no. <laughs> Tell him it's the Mexican dad. <laughs> here, that Mexican fella. Well, go. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. It's fucking scary. It's not that. It's not that at all. <laughs> oh, Judge Rado. <laughs> I mean, oh, probably... so what was the fallout after that? You know, d at that point, after they released you, were were yeah, you so under the impression that it was going to fade away? No, I just I got released. But one of the things that was funny is I didn't have a lawyer at this point because I did have a lawyer years ago when I was younger and fighting all the time. But he was like in his nineties, so I didn't even I didn't even try and look him up. I just thought he's <laughs> dead. <laughs> like he's he's fucking dead. But uh, I got they went okay. Well, you've got a like state appointed lawyer, and I went and and I sat down at the in front of the glass right, and I, I shit you not, he did this to me because. One of the funniest things that is fucking pranked during this whole trial. I sat across from him and he just done. He was writing and he just done that, like put his finger up so that he could what, keep writing. Your camera had stuck. Uh, what, what did he do? I he, he done like that as if uh, okay, and like just second. kept writing. So I just sat there in silence for about like 20, 30 seconds while he finished his notes, and then he slowly looks up at me and goes, "Shalom." <laughs> 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 and I, I actually jumped and froze and went oh my god and he went i'm not jewish <laughs> he went, it's okay <laughs> and i was kind of like well you know lawyer you know <laughs> but, but ended up uh, i spoke to him and we exchanged contact details i get sent back to the cell and there's this word i forget what it is but basically the judge will look through his itinerary for the day and if there's anything that's dumb on it, the judge will just say, release them and just give them their date. Just mm -hmm. let them out of the cell and give them their date. Because the judge wants to, he wants to be away for five, you know, golf mm -hmm. and all that. So it ends up, the guy just comes in and says, if, I forget the phrase, but he just went, something granted. He went, off you go. And then I was like, oh, well, bye, bye guys. To like guys that are about to get like 15, 20. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bye-bye. Like that's so what I left. <laughs> uh, and then... It ended up, I get given a court date, and it, the trial ended up lasting for about two years, and it was about eight or nine dates during like the whole trial. <laughs> uh, that's me waving outside that's court, not, wa you, waving. Can I, can I give you, can I give you a, a tip here? Low wave down here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, 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 I know. Take Kyle's advice. This is wrong. You're looking for something. Yeah. Thank the, the, God the, the, the your fingers papers. are apart in that photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always the, like the this. Always like this. <laughs> wrist active. Get that wrist active. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> These very stoic wrists. You got to work on the throws and stuff like that. Oh no, the newspapers were very happy when I did that because I was like, no, I was waving. I was waving and everything, but there was footage of me like doing that with my hand as I came out and everything. But my wife thought I'd done a Nazi salute for a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and all that. But uh, ended up ended up what happened. It was like eight, nine times I was in court and I was in Jesus. there for two two years, two year trial. So twice as long as Nuremberg. But it ended up, <laughs> <laughs> but it ended, it ended up every Every time I ended up, obviously, after I got arrested, and I got a big boost in subs, and people started watching my channel and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And uh, while I'm going to court, every time I went to court, um, I would be back in the papers again. My family would be getting harassed. You know, they would be turning up at my door, all manners of stuff and everything. And I had nothing. I could not get jobs. Could not get a job anywhere, like even in security and stuff like that. Like uh, I would go to a place, and in the interview, they would go, "Hey, aren't you that?" Yeah, and. <laughs> Then I wouldn't get hired. Mm -hmm. Some places I tried to be honest with them and went, 
yeah, just so you know, you know, there may be a little bit of press interest, you know, some, <laughs> some media concern about me working here in your pawn shop. <laughs> and, <I'm> like, no. <laughs> and then they were kind of like, oh, you're that guy. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> Like, no, you're not working. Actually, here. I got some old uniforms you might want to take a look at before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> some some places, some fucking places was uh, like, I just lied. I just went, oh, yeah, I'm I'm this guy and would like a job. And I, I got recognized <laughs> by a customer on my first fucking day. Mm, and, I went, oh, no. and then, like, the manager got called in because some little rat bitch in the staff, like, told on me. The manager came in and, yeah, I was fired on my first day. Never get well, paid. Like- Either. Let me ask you this: wow. Like these are all the bad things. These are people who think you are, see, I guess, and and they're like, oh, we're gonna not gonna have him. We're not gonna have him here. We won't. We're gonna even let him work somewhere." Did you have any actual Nazis who were like, "Hey, man, I got a job for you. Come on over here to the golf course." Like, 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 never. Nothing like that. <laughs> never, never had anything like that. Shit. No. No, never. That's never how you know any. they're completely out of power over there. Because 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 if there were still some Nazis <laughs> pulling some strings, they'd have been like, ah. Get that Dankula guy over here. Let's let's put him in charge of something. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's take this as a for the young professionals out there. There's nothing that kills your career like being an open. <laughs> 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 if you're on the on the fence, <laughs> say no. <laughs> you can't get jobs anywhere, you know, unless you know, apart from you know the Ukrainian military. I'm, yeah. ju- I'm just I'm just laughing at the fact that you had a friend that came back and went, dude, I come so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're in the jizz biz, you try and help your friends out. Yeah. <laughs> we need to we're going to we're going to send you some dank. You're going to be just absolutely soaked. Oh, no, my stuff. My stuff's on ice. Me and my wife do IVF. My stuff's on ice. I've, I've had to come into oh. the jar and hand well, see, it to the nurse awkwardly. <laughs> it does and, uh, not increase your sperm count it increases your volume of of seminal fluid and shit he doesn't want to mess with the yeah. cocktail he's, he's on it so oh. uh, you went to the i'm sorry we were i'm interrupting our own edge you went to the the <laughs> fertility place jerked off in a little office and then handed it over yeah no no magazines no tv no nothing i had to i had to connect to their wi-fi on my fucking phone because it was no <laughs> signal and i just uh-huh. went the weirdest fucking hentai that i can look up to have this have their sys admin fucking freak out <laughs> and i uh, shout man nah, nah, i just i just googled pictures of, like i just i think I, I think i literally went porn what did i do again and i went on to google and typed in like big boobs and just like went into like <laughs> images <laughs> You know, shit, because I don't fucking like a child. <laughs> like a child. Like Safe a, like search. A <laughs> <laughs> but it I did ended this. up like I had to come out. I had to like come out, and uh, the problem is, is you come out into a waiting room of everyone who knows you've just had a wank, and not mm-hmm. everyone's there for a wank. There's women there mm-hmm. as well, and they tell you if there's no nurse, keep the jar in your armpit to keep the sperm warm. And all ah. that. So I was just sitting with like a jug of cum in my armpit for like five minutes, and nobody came. So I went outside for a smoke. And other than <laughs> then, the nurse came and went, "Where is he?" And people in the waiting room went, "He's outside smoking." And she was not fucking happy with me. She, <laughs> she was like really upset. And like in the car park, I'm just handing over like a jar of cum to the fucking nurse. <laughs> I've done this good. twice. I, I yeah. Yeah. When so we had hope really quickly, but for Colin there was this delay. It turned out it was on my wife's side a little foul up with the c-section but um we didn't know why we weren't having a kid so we got me tested the first time i go in there and they gave me like a jar to take home and they're like wanking this thing drive straight over and and do the thing and uh the test went well but i, I guess they do it more than once and uh they're like yeah so here's a little sample collector you can go home do whatever and i'm like don't you have like wank banks right here and they're like yeah we do but you can go home and i'm like nah i don't know trip i I'm here already, you know, like uh, I'm good to go. And, uh, you know, I, you have to like abstain for two or three days. But I, so I was ready. I wasn't ready to abstain longer. Like I did. Let's go right now. I'm all pent up. I'm ready. I'm, <laughs> I'm a finely tuned athlete and I'm peaking today. So uh, so they put me in a little wank bank and there were magazines there worn out. Ooh. Pages missing, folded where <laughs> folds don't belong. Oh. Like these, the, oh, many men, th- these were slut magazines that man had passed between them for, you know, I'm talking about the magazines themselves, not the pictures. The women were lovely, I'm sure, but the magazines, they were passed from guy to guy to guy. Okay. And, um, 
Um, but you know, I made it work. Things I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those magazines could talk. They they have one story to tell you. I like I like yeah. the fact that pages were folded as if someone wanted to keep their place. Like I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big folds to be the continued. I mean, <laughs> someone was manhandling these magazines. Like like were they stored up in a tube at point? I don't know. But uh, and when I got out there, this is the part I didn't like. I've got my sample, and there's like a nurse behind a counter. I didn't have to wait. They were like ready for me. And she goes, okay. And I'm like, ah, right here in front of me? They're checking out yeah. the size sure of my you put enough in there. So she, she might have to be like, oh, you, did you miss? <laughs> she no, she no matter like, how much, no matter how much I, I gave, I would go out with a comment like that. <laughs> like, even if it's not a drop miss, be like, oh, it's all over the toilet seat. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Ghostbusters in here. <laughs> you know, I mean, could you be confident with that cup of cum? What if you just be like, I got it. It's the cum. They expect <laughs> you to be in there for a long time, maybe, be, like some people, because it's a fucking weird place to do that. So you'd have time if you wanted to get like a couple loads out. I you could. They look a lot at your. um like the density of it like i don't think they count every sperm yeah they just want to know like a subsample i think i wonder if you put yeah. a second and third load in there if it would hurt your numbers oh yeah. fuck you're right I, I, yeah I, 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 are you thinking that those later loads won't be as have as dense sperm i'll count? bring some i am but i'm not a scientist i'm just a guy really good at masturbating well yeah. Your first test of the day is the one that's supposed to get tested. I think so. Like they, they have you save up for a couple of days, and I think your first load is your best effort. I, like I, I if you told me, Woody, week. we're going to run a yeah. hundred meter dash, but run three of them to get the best time possible. It's like, bro, trust me, they get worse and worse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good comparison. You're right. I'm glad you guys talked me off that ledge before I made a fool of myself. <laughs> Sperm clinic. <laughs> I just been go it, there. He's been in there for forty-five like, no. minutes. <laughs> I heard <laughs> it, it took me magazine. a while because I kept getting put off because like it's just a little shitty like doctor's wooden door. I could yeah. hear everyone's conversations in the waiting oh, that's room. Hotter. Oh, I know, man, yeah. and I'm I'm sort of sitting there like that. I don't give a fuck if you're going to fucking Rachel's barbecue at the weekend. Bro. I don't want to fucking hear about this. I don't want to go. Oh, but we have to go because I said we'd go. I'm trying to have a wank. You're like yelling oh, from. You're yelling from like, the room. Talk Shut about your pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get get this office. I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> Talk about your tits. <laughs> I'm, I'm spinning barbecue fantasies in my head. Come on. See, I think you guys are <laughs> masturbating at a lower level than me. I don't think you have my subject matter expertise on this. I, I could totally <laughs> spin her her conversation. You, 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 you said like you sit there with headphones in, <laughs> listening to like whale song at the right. <laughs> it must be exactly sixty-eight hertz to achieve like peak spell count. <laughs> 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 it's like have you ever seen that old king of the hill where hank has to give sperm and the, the doctor's like mr hill would you like any visual aid and he's like oh yes if you have popular mechanics i'd appreciate it and he's <laughs> and they're like no mr hill you have to masturbate in the cup <laughs> yeah but he has horrible sperm you know that's part of his character right? to overcome yeah what it, oh yeah king, king of the hill, hill is coming back I, I hope that what? Mike Judge that has a lot to do with it. I hope that he's still the writer, the the main, the head honcho. Because so much of like King of the Hill is like his brainchild. Like it's the brainchild of Mike Judge. So as long as he's super involved, it'll be good. I'm curious about how they'll handle. Like, will the characters be you know ageless, like The Simpsons, or they just come back and Bobby's still a little kid? And and I hope and, so. Like, and yeah. Joseph is like right has has is 13. He just hit puberty still. Uh, like, like, is, is Lady Bird still a fucking live? Like, like, or is it like, are we catching up? And Bobby's like, junior propane salesman. Dad, and I'm trans now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby, you're not doing that liberal stuff in my. That, that is my purse. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That's <laughs> like good. That. Uh, Did you ever have to smack a girl in self-defense in school, Hank? No, uh, but I used to work as a bouncer, so I've I've had to. Right, I would see when it's two big, massive roid heads full of cocaine. Right, I would a mm -hmm. hundred times over rather break them up than two girls. Jesus Christ! Because if it's two big guys, 
they're throwing punches. You get into the middle of them and you push them back, and like they're like nine times out of ten, they're not going to try and hit you. They'll try and mm-hmm. punch past you, but they'll try and be cool with you. But they'll still. Or they try might and even get low key be happy to stop fighting. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Some of them are like some guy will like use use the shield, like you know, you lucky he's holding me back, you know, like that, <laughs> that, type of, that type of shit. But see when it's two girls and you're in you're in the hair trying to untangle fingers mm-hmm. out the hair and everything and like and then you can't tell what hair's real and isn't because the extensions have come out and stuff like that and it's just like <laughs> it is an absolute nightmare but one of the worst ones that happened to me was a uh, but you also see it as, as someone who's worked in security anytime there's a fight almost a hundred percent of the time it's over a woman. A girl has been involved at some point. Mm. Some guy brushed against a guy's arse when he walked past the bar. He said something he shouldn't have or whatever. Or someone mm. is now dating this guy's ex and he wants to go up and say some shit. Like it, It's always been stuff like that. But there was two girls fighting. I'm getting in. And one girl is on the ground. She's on her knees. And like they're, they're just throwing pu- wild punches each other. You know when Are girls fight? Two yeah. girls fighting? Two girls, girls yeah. Uh, I'm like two ghettos. Well, okay. <laughs> That's a little bold, but uh, you know, when two ghettos fight, it is, uh, it is a rough deal when two ghettos fight. All right. Yeah, that's kind of racist about my accent, would it? <laughs> uh, Uno reverse. Like, <laughs> it's, the, it's the same as Sargon of Akkad. I can't say his real name. Carl. Carl. I call him Carl. And not, not Carl. Well, I can't do that. I get Carol. Carl. But basically, like, one, one girl's on her knee. And you know how whenever girls just grab the hair, pull the head down, and just mm-hmm. wildly throw, like, a hundred punches, maybe one of them lands, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm one girl's on her knees, and I'm in between them trying to, like, use my body to block the punches because it's girls, like, they don't hurt, right? But I'm trying to untangle the hair. The girl behind me had reached, like, through the gap under my legs, and she couldn't see. She then grabs my crotch and just crushes from behind me. And I'm sitting shouting at her, going, it's me, that's me, you fucking grabbed and everything like that. She dug her fucking nails in, because she thought it was the other girl, so she's trying to, like, dig her nails to hurt her. I ended, up, I ended up after it. She's outside, you know, her mascara's all down her face. She's all fucked up from the fight, and she came up like... I'm really sorry. I didn't even know that was you. I'm sorry. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine. I had to went into the toilet for a piss. I, there's like, I've got scratches like all over my dick, right? <laughs> all over my balls, all over the inside of my leg, Good fucking day. everything. And then I had to go home to my wife, like, funny story. Like, this girl, <laughs> <laughs> this girl you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, believe me. <laughs> yeah. No, look, look, luckily, luckily, like, there was witnesses and all that as well. But one of the, one of them, <laughs> involving a woman like this was and uh, like i was impressed by this even though i was almost blinded for life right i i shut Damn. my eyes just in time two big guys long story but these guys had a problem with each other and we always had to like keep them apart mm-hmm. in this bar that i was working in right but then one day it came ahead and they ended up fighting so we get in and there's like three of us getting in the middle of it because it wasn't just these two guys it was like all their friends jumped in as well sure. so we we're trying to form like the wall in the middle of them to keep them apart but the two main guys are fighting i try and get into the middle of them and just as i'm pushing like the big guy away this guy was like six seven he was a fucking big dude right the other guy's girlfriend has ran behind him and like <laughs> and she grabbed a glass and jumped on a stool, jumped on a table. Remember the fucking end scene for fucking, what was that fucking Looney Tunes basketball fucking movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, Space Jam. Like, yeah. Space Jam. She goes leaping through the fucking air like that <laughs> and just smashes the glass right down in the guy's head. But I shut my eyes just in time and just tons of tiny shards of glass hit me in the face. A Damn. couple stuck. And everything, but like, and I was cut, but it was like little tiny, tiny, tiny cuts Mm -hmm. and everything. But then we were trying to, after she smashed the glass, that was it. All the girls got up and it was a fucking riot. We had to call the police and we're like grabbing people and wrestling them out the club. But then as soon as we come back in to break up the rest of the fight, that person we just threw out would come back in (laughs) and like keep fighting and everything. So yeah, that was a fucked up night. But that's the thing is, even, even though I was nearly blinded, it was... It was fucking impressive. Like she got air. She got fucking <laughs> air and she hit her she hit her target fucking dead on. I mean, I was angry, but you know, get I, 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 I respect her. <laughs> <laughs> so when when all the pug stuff happened to you, you said yeah. you had a YouTube with eight subscribers. 
Did you have any plans whatsoever to go into video making before this happened? YouTube was a stupid side hobby. Like my, my first ever video that I uploaded was just me zooming in on the dog's face and calling him a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was like my that was like my first ever YouTube video. It was just a dumb side project to do for mm. fun with my friends. But then uh, every time, like I would make some videos, like giving updates and stuff like that, like sort of talking about certain things. And then I was only doing that as a bit of fun. I was like, I'm not making a go of this. But every time I went mm. to court, like I would get in the papers again. Subscribers would go up. Other YouTubers wanted me on their podcast and to talk to me, and then people would subscribe to me, and then ended up like it was actually sargon that was like ah, you should start making videos like you know what you're talking about and everything you should just go for it so i started doing it more and more and featured on other people's channels and kept going back to court for more court dates and it just mm-hmm. grew and grew and grew and grew and now it's fucking my full-time job now and i've got a studio and staff and all kinds of stuff now which i did not expect this this was not planned because <laughs> the thing was as well and it had, like the amount of people that bitch about me going online and like like laughing at like leftists and all that <laughs> stuff all the time is they get angry about it and i'm like you know that the reason that i'm here doing this is because you wouldn't let me get a fucking job yeah <laughs> like i wanted to just go back to normal i tried like i didn't want to make a go on youtube but you wouldn't let me get a job so i had a shit ton of free time and guess what i did with it and then it turned out it got popular so basically it's their fault Every, yeah. <laughs> every, everything I've said and every bit of trouble I've got in since is their fault. Yeah, you could be working at Joe's Pawnery or whatever the fuck. You okay. have nothing you. to do with it. I should, I should be the <laughs> asshole bouncer again. I should be, I should be doing the doors in Glasgow. That's what I should mm-hmm. be doing. But no, I'm fucking on YouTube now. <laughs> that, that was. I That's did great, try man. and go back to normal. I didn't want. That was the thing. Is see being in the public eye and all that type of shit. I was like, I don't. I kind of don't like this. Mm-hmm. I don't like people I don't know knowing about me mm-hmm. and all this shit. And all, man, like shit tons of people know my name. I don't like that. <laughs> and, all that and it was just kind of weird. <laughs> so I wanted weird. to go back to normal, but it's weird nah. when you meet them. Like you meet you meet a, someone to you that's a total stranger, but yeah, they know a lot about you. Yeah, it's an information mm-hmm. disadvantage. It's all. This is my favorite kind of people. <laughs> and, uh, some of some of them are yeah. funny. I had one guy that came up to me in the street and went like that. Count Dankula, I've seen your balls, and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hello, <laughs> like, good, good to meet you too, man." Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it it seems like it's worked out pretty well with your success on YouTube. You got almost a million subs. Is there any more fallout you might have to deal with from the pug? prank or is that in your in the past everyone's still absolutely con- convinced that i'm saying that video was me trying to get jews killed like there are some people out there that are so it's, it's how long has it been this is 2022 this is fucking like six years yeah six years ago like fucking and people are still fucking going on about it going what an indirect way oh, to kill jewish people teaching your dog to Salute. Like I would have yeah. done something so much better if that was my intention. Like yeah. no, at no point would I have done this and went, yes, this is propaganda. People will definitely Step take Step one, seriously. the yeah. dog. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, you, you would have been top guy. <laughs> 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 no, but, but that was like, and the, but the problem is, is I, I did this to sort of counteract. <laughs> Everyone goes, oh, you made that video, and that means that you're a secret. And then I post the other video that I made of me teaching the, my black pug to salute whenever I say black power. <laughs> and, and, and whenever I say fuck the police, he gets dead excited <laughs> as well and all that. And I'm going, well, this obviously means that I'm a black supremacist and I support BLM. And they go, well, that's not the same because because dumb fucking reasons yeah. there's no argument after that it's like but, guys come on he's clearly yeah. just doing anything that requires a salute that a dog you can need be capable. a chihuahua you could go far with that there's a lot of a jokes chihuahua the, well the, the, the part part of the meta comedy of it is even though like, like white supremacy the master race and pugs that is definitely not something that they no. are because their lungs are in their fucking ears <laughs> like they're just like it's, it's just the most genetic abomination like if, if, if there's any animal where you have to get a part of its throat removed if you want it to live past eight years it's not supposed to be here yeah it's not like <laughs> they're, a, they're a fucking abomination but or did you just like go to religious schools and like they kind of drilled it in your head but you didn't not they, they, they drilled it into my head but i was just kind of like it's not for me so yeah okay when i was a kid i was in the same situation except i was so goddamn scared of hell 
I was like anal about it. Like, I got to take this serious. This is real. Like if, and I remember as a kid, like my thought process being like, like the teacher would say something in Sunday school or whatever about like hell's very real and people will end up there if they don't believe in Jesus. And it is torture for all eternity. Now let's talk about Job or let's talk about Jonah and the whale. And I remember like all the other kids, like the teachers, the parents, they just kind of move on. And I would be like the one person who like was treating it like it was truly real in my head where I'm like, guys, we can't be talking about Jonah. Hell is coming imminently. We need to be prepared for this. We need to be going for the big fish first guys. And over like over getting older, I was like, Dan, if a lot of these people really believed this, they would have been acting like I was as a kid. Like, oh, we, no. God, like, hell like, is there. It's imminent. We need to, everything we do needs to be fixated on not ending up oh, in hell. There, what could matter in this material believe. plane? There are people like that. There are people but the who people believe, who told and when me, you see them, when, when we see the people who believe, we are we stop and go, oh, that's not a real Christian. When when you see a real Christian, the rest of them in the room are like, oh, he's not one of us. Yeah. Because <laughs> The guy who actually reads that book and does what it says cannot survive in mainstream life the, anymore. Like, like yeah. that, way. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. See, see, one of the one of the things that I've, see, I, I do videos on like Celtic myths and stuff like that because a lot of them are like dying out and a lot of people don't know about it. But there was one story where it's like Celtic myths are things like the Kelpies, which are magical horses that could walk on water. And there's also things like the Nukalave, where it's like this half man, half horse that had like a de- like a breath that would just rain pestilence down and all that. But then there was another story I read, and it's called The Gilly Do. Right now, the Gilly Do was a guy that lived in the forest and he had clothes made of leaves and shit like that, which is where I see ghillie suit. That's where it comes from. Oh. Like the Gilly Do, right? The guy that was wearing twigs and stuff like that and leaves. And sometimes, <clears throat> kids would get lost in the forest. They would come across the ghillie do. The ghillie do would say, well, it's night time now. It's too dangerous to go out. Come back to my house and like the first light in the morning, I'll take you back out. He would feed them. They would go to bed. The next day, they got up. He would lead them to the forest and go, your village is that way. Be more careful in the woods. And I'm like, why is this a fantasy story? That's just a guy that lives in the woods. <laughs> I was like, see if he was like talking to the animals or like the trees moved when he sang or like moved out the way or there was some... He's a mat- forest yeah. guardian for lost travelers. Yeah, he was like just taking to meet the fairies or something. I was like, <laughs> this isn't a fantasy story. I completely believe this happened. <laughs> I, I completely like, believe there was an eccentric lunatic dressed yeah. in vines who would say, I am familiar with this small regional area. Allow me to assist you. But I live in. Yeah. yeah. Like, this, this is where I live, my forest. And, I, and everyone's like, yeah, this mysterious creature. It's not a mysterious creature. It's a guy that lived in the woods. Like, like that's all it fucking was. But I never Maybe that was an like, early on. Yeah. Maybe that was an early on myth before there was a precedent set that they had to be fun. The one, the one time in school that I fought a really big guy, it was still a fair fight because he had gigantism, so his bones didn't really work. <laughs> right? Wait, so, he had gigantism? Yeah, that wasn't was an like, advantage in a fight? No, it's, it basically, you can, you can have a gigantism and you can be a really big guy. He was one of those guys where it was like, this sounds bad, I'm not going to say his name, but anyone that went to school with me will know who I'm talking yeah, about. Oh, the, the, it, yeah, who knows it, among it, which gigantic There's only person. one gigant giant in all of Scotland. <laughs> he, he, had, he had one of those like big foreheads where you could tell like something's wrong. He was fucking huge, right? He was massive, but he was like slow because he couldn't move, right? He had like one of those, he had like one big shoe. To like make up for like the length of his leg and all that. Basically, his body didn't grow right, right? Mm-hmm. And I and this this was the thing is I don't even know it was such a stupid reason for the fight to fucking start, right? My my dad's a firefighter, right? He's retired, long retired now. But we were in this in the queue in the cafeteria, and he just turns to me and he says, Your dad's a firefighter, isn't he? And I went, Aye. <laughs> and then he just went, and now there's a children's TV show over here called Fireman Sam. Right, it's just a kid's show. He's a fireman. Mm-hmm. He goes around and fights fires, and it's for children, right? And he just goes, ha, 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 fireman Sam, right? And I, <laughs> and, and I don't know why, but I threw my bag off and just started hitting him, right? <laughs> he's he's By the way, Taylor, me. Taylor, this is a retarded man with gigantism he's wailing on. No, he wasn't, so, he wasn't, he wasn't, so, he wasn't mentally retarded. So right? high, high stakes. You said he had a big forehead, and he clearly just made a child's joke. No, like, retard. He, 
He was he physically landed, retarded. Would you describe him as a fat-headed? He, but, right. Mentally, he was all there. He knew what he was doing, right? He understood the situation, right? He was just very big and slow. He got a few punches in, and those punches fucking hurt, by the way, right? Those were like the first, but he got he got me right there on the cheekbone, and I was I, I was lying back on the table at this point because he used his size to just grab me and pin me down. <laughs> he got a punch in at my face, and I was actually like, fuck oh, man, like he fucking and that was when I, I managed to wriggle away and everything and i was hitting him and we were rolling around and tables were going everywhere and then it ended up it got broke up and i get taken up to like the rector's <laughs> office that's like a superintendent and he ends up going like why did you start hitting him and i thought back going i don't know, like, I, don't know <laughs> like, I i think he just caught me at like a really bad fucking moment or something man i have no fucking idea but then they do the thing where they force you to shake hands and then like that's the end of it right but i'm an, I, I gave as good as i got but he was like way bigger than me my only advantage was he couldn't really move properly yeah. because he was a retard <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that. it seems like your biggest advantage was surprise. <laughs> that he yeah, it was. Leapt on the. Oh, oh no! You see, you see, when, when the bag gets thrown off, that's go time. Like that's that's he, he knew. He knew. I remember I had some snacks once. in there for him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I, this I was young. Call it like eleven years old or something, right? So it wasn't like deep into the fighting, and uh, I was physically better than this kid, but he was like picking on me, and he's th- he, he, we weren't in school. We were like outside in grass in front of all the houses and everything. And he had a spitball for some reason. He hit me with a spitball. And I was like, I I can't just let that go. Right. Like I I can't pretend this didn't, everyone saw it or whatever. I get this guy in full mount and I have him pinned down, not hitting him or anything. And he punches me in the ear and it it hurt. It didn't just hurt. It kind of burned. Like it was a special kind of hurt. Mm -hmm. And it like, it rang and it, and I was like, Oh, I guess ear punch ear punches are on the table and, and I'm in full mount, right? So <laughs> I give him like one, two, and punch both his ears, and he starts crying. And I'm like, well, I, I guess I proved my point. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the fight ended there. Just with two I didn't hit him in the eyes, I didn't pop his he nose. I guess gave crying. him two ear punches and he's crying. And I'm like, I uh, why did you start this? But how that's old was how it he? went down. He was all—he's my age too. We were both like. Oh, uh, I was really hoping you just said a number, and I was gonna say, "Oh yeah, that was last week." <laughs> <laughs> was the last Thursday before the show. <laughs> so you see one of you see one of the greatest punches I ever threw in my entire life I was immediately followed with one of the most embarrassing moments in my entire life. Right? It was like there was this nightclub that we used to go to like every single weekend, right? And it was kicking out time, and kicking out time is always the the nervous time. That's when that's when shit always happens, and there was. Four guys, this was happening like further down the street. There was like four guys beating the shit out of a friend of mine. So we all went like, what the fuck? And like, we all ran down to help, right? So I'm running, I'm drunk as fuck though, right? But I'm immediate adrenaline, like, oh, fucking here we go. (laughs) So we're like, I'm sprinting down the street now. It's been raining, right? It's been raining. Mm -hmm. I'm sprinting down the street and I'm... I run and it's like a full force, like I'm running at full pelt and like the guy even turns around like, <laughs> look at me. And I'm just like, boom. And he, he fucking spins. And ever, it was like a fucking anime. Right? Like, I hit him and he fucking spins, right? It was the best punch I've ever thrown. Right? He was out. Like, he was snoring after that, right? I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't four of them versus, like, my one right, friend. Sure. Like, I was fucked up, right? But it ended up, as soon as I'd done it, I slipped and fell right on my arse. And I'm running at full speed, so I'm just sliding down the street. I like, <laughs> arrived at the fight and then immediately left on my arse. <laughs> sliding down the street, but it, it rips my fucking jeans open and my arse cheeks get shredded. <laughs> like, the fucking bitch, right? So I got up and, like, the fight, the guys have, like, ran away because about, like, fucking eight guys ran down to, like, mm. fucking get these guys for beating up a friend and fucking... Like everyone's like that looking at me and I turned around and just went, is it bad? And just everyone, <laughs> all my friends, everyone outside the nightclub are all just laughing because <laughs> the, the back part of my jeans is gone. Right? <laughs> I, am, I, I now have just like assless chaps except my, <laughs> except, 
Except so my two arse cheeks are sticking out the jeans and they're just bleeding like fuck with like <laughs> stones stuck oh, in them and no. shit from like oh. wrestling down. And I had to fucking go home and everything. And the worst part was I had to sit in a taxi with like leather seats. Oh. But, we, uh. but we had to like hide it from the taxi driver. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, yeah, yeah, like that. So I'm sitting there we're just with like my bloody arse on these leather seats and Ugh. the guy like and I'm like, anyway, thanks very much, pal. And like, just getting out, just knowing he's got arse blood all over, <laughs> oh, all over the back of his taxi. Oh. And he's going, so going sorry to go about pick someone blood. else up. <laughs> so some poor people that night were sitting in my ass blood. <laughs> Man, that I'm must have been that... such a roller coaster of emotions to feel that hardcore and badass and then to be demonstrably humiliated in front of Yeah. But I imagine was most of Scotland. The Lord, the Lord gave us. injury, though. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, like. I w- I've never like had an ass injury. Uh, I I, uh, well, I, I decided to get into one. <laughs> yes, you have. Both of you guys are ass injury veterans. I got into Drew, one of those um, like like a oh, this metal cart. I went down a, uh, an asphalt hill in a metal cart one time and landed on my back and like slid on my spine a little bit and just like took it took the skin. You could see the vertebrae. It's like no skin where the vertebrae are on my lower back, yeah. and uh, that sucked. But not nearly as much as what he's describing. That's awful. <laughs> no, the, the other, the only other like arse injury that I've had is fucking. Uh, I broke my tailbone skateboarding. That that was fucking horrible. That was wow. so horrible. Man. That was like a year. Ones. That was like you, you go to the hospital and they just go, they, they they'll X-ray it and see if the position, like the bones broken, is really bad. That's when they need to operate. But mine was still where it was supposed to be, but it was fucking broke, right? Mm-hmm. And they basically just go. Here's a shit ton of painkillers. Buy yourself an inflatable rubber ring, and it was like a year of you can't sit directly down on your ass. You're always like leaning to one side. Like all the pressure oh. is on like the back. A year, like your, a year yeah. of that. Jesus it was, Christ, it was fucking terrible. But the worst part, right, and the worst part was this happened in school, right. So I was the, what happened was I was skateboarding. I like went up on the ramp. Like my truck's caught, and it was a big ramp. And I just fell backwards and my body made like a V shape, like an arrowhead. And the tip mm. of the arrowhead was my arse. And it just hit the concrete and I, I felt it like pop. It was mm-hmm. fucking horrible, but it ended up. See, one thing they don't tell you about is anytime you cough or sneeze, all the muscles in your body like tense up. Mm-hmm. And see, when they tense up down there, it's fucking excruciatingly sore. It hurts so fucking much. So see, when, when you're sitting there and you feel yourself a bit of sneeze, you're like, oh no. Oh no no no! <laughs> and she, ah, like that, and it just fucking hurts, right? The only way to stop it from hurting is to stand up like perfectly poker straight, clench your arse muscles as tight as you can, and then cough or sneeze. And that's the only way that you could stop it. And it happened to me in school. So I'm in the middle of class having to stand up, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, <I'll> go, like <coughs> and sit back down, and everyone started calling me sergeant. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm having to fucking stand to attention anytime I wanted to call for sneeze. That fucking sucked. That was a fucking horrible injury, man. I mean, Sergeant is as good as you can hope for for an ass. <laughs> like they picked on the least embarrassing part of that whole process. Yeah, they, they did do the whole. Oh, you need to, you need to like have a rubber ring when you sit down in school. And I went no. I will lean to the side, <laughs> and when that leg gets tired, I will lean to the other. And like, I am not going in there with a rubber ring because I know exactly what everyone's going to say. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can't come back from that. No, bringing no, a rubber ring. Yeah, yeah. No, that took a really fucking long time to heal. By the way, even like for a few years after it, sometimes when I would just be like sitting down normally, it would like get sore, and I would have to stand up and walk around. Like that was fucking, that was shit. That took such a long time to fucking heal. You think that's your worst injury ever? Um, probably. I have been stabbed before. But, well, how did, but like, how did that yeah. happen? How and why? Uh, it was while I was on a date. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's was a it with your own girlfriend? <laughs> no, no. It was, no. It, was, it, was a, it was a girl. I was single, and it was a girl that I had a, I had a bit of an interest in. And basically, like we were, we were going to like get some. We went to like the local ASDA. Which is like our Walmart, and we were just getting some like sweets and crisps and stuff like that. And we were going to go watch films, you know. Ye, this was in the days of DVDs, though, so it wasn't Netflix and chill. Sure. I was, I was basically going to hope to look at the DVD symbol bouncing around the screen, you know, that that type <laughs> of thing. But uh, 
it's a long story. I'm not going to go into the full history, but there was a guy that I had a long running problem with. Right, basically, mm-hmm. he he would get me, I would get him, he would get me, I would get him. Bit blah, of a blah, rival, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So I'm just sitting outside Asda, just like talking to her, and she like jumped and shouted like Marcus, and I went like what, <laughs> like not realizing there was a guy. He was running up behind me, and I felt like he punched me in the side. Right, but it was like was like when someone taps your shoulder and you turn that way, but they've ran the other way. So I felt yeah. this in my side. I turned that way, but he'd ran that way, and I turned around. And as soon as I saw the back of his head, I knew who it was. I thought he punched me. Like I thought he'd fucking mm-hmm. punch me. So I'm sitting shouting at him, like fucking like giving him pelters. And then <laughs> my fucking great, <laughs> <great. laughs> but, but like uh, she then starts like screaming, and I just look down, and you just see like blood just like soaking my Ooh. shirt and everything. Can you I left the injury. Like what, how did he get you? It was it was a screwdriver. It was Fun. a screwdriver that he got me away. But the, the way it was is like, see if it went straight in, like say that that's my stomach. If it went in like that, then I was in like serious trouble. But he got me at like an angle. Mm-hmm. So it, it was just all flesh. It was all flesh that he so fucking it was got. Like, it was like somehow both deep and shallow. Like there was a long yeah. injury, but it, yeah, I follow. You yeah. it, c- it could have been really bad. If he got it straight in, then it, it could have been really fucking bad. But it went in my side and like to the front of my stomach. It was all just fat and everything that it had. Mm-hmm. And, everyone, and I, the thing was, is I didn't know what to do. So I looked down at it and I looked up at the girl and I just started laughing. <laughs> oh man, and I just went, and she's freaking out, and I'm like, calm down, calm down, calm down. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And so all, what and did you went, do? Did you get real medical attention, or just apply pressure and heal? People, people, I put pressure on it, and people ran out of Asda, like freaking out, and everyone going, "Oh my god, someone's just been stabbed," and everyone then <laughs> fucking. But then, like, ended up like I get taken in an ambulance. The cops talked to me. I didn't tell the cops shit because. Yeah. Well, if you, if you do, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> but it uh, ended Jesus. up like, I did say to the girl, like, I need to go to the hospital. Uh, I had a great time, though. And maybe, maybe we should do this again, like making all the usual jokes. She never spoke to me again. <laughs> never. Because I was trying to explain the situation. People are going, oh, that's a guy I've got a problem with. This happens sometimes. <laughs> Man, We're in a prank she, war. <laughs> if you, you date again. me, it'll never be boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn. Fuck, yeah. Just casually got stabbed. It's a very, very common thing in Scotland. It was actually really fucking bad here for a very long time. It got to the point where if you got caught with a knife, it was six months mandatory sentence. Like no ifs, no buts, six months. That's and then the pri- and then the prisons filled up really fucking quickly and they had to like dial that back. I have a question. But yeah, we we were the murder capital of Western Europe for when they fucking say decades, no knife, yeah. does that apply to shorter knives and multi tools and stuff? Like you you can be arrested for having a multi tool. Yeah. That's insane. That yeah. Yeah, that's really bonkers. What if you I carry a multi tool? There was a guy the in a, there was a guy in Aberdeen that got arrested for having a potato peeler. Google it, Google it. Like, as, yeah, it's the I thing know? is, see, see if you see if you're fishing or hunting or camping, it's then down to the police officer's discretion. Like, Without can, moving my chair, I can reach five knives and three axes. Well, keep them there, and you won't have any <laughs> problems. <laughs> you won't have the Scottish authorities it, breathing. Down it's down. weird to me that that like that they have laws against just like sharpened edges like that's it's, we it's have because here, we, it's we, we don't, we don't have streets with a, yeah. with a blade and they don't have things. a constitution right i have a multi-tool in my pocket always yeah oh, no, that's, that's, right a, that's a big that, difference yeah. like like I, don't we yeah. have like a three inch limit on the blade that we can you can carry it's or something, something like i have three and a half in my head but i'm low confidence yeah it, that's interesting though because there's constitutional carry of uh of firearms in so many places where you can just strap that bitch on your hip does it pertain to swords? Can I throw a katana on my back? Absolutely, you can. Yeah. Mm, sure. The one yeah. question I got wrong on my concealed carry Pretty was sure. that it enables me to carry knives. It doesn't. Oh, I thought you could just carry knives and like by default. I'm going by that. You uh-huh. know. I don't think or so. maybe like like special knives, like the ones that they do have limits on, like butterfly knives or those like ones that shoot out. Like I know they have laws about those, right? Why, why are uh, butterfly knives like illegal, but you could walk down the street with the big fucking like crocodile gun? You fucking it's got to be something yeah. from movies where that, that you know, it's 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 something that got legislated because somebody saw something scary in a movie. It has nothing to do uh, with the danger. You're, I, I bet you're a hundred percent right. It totally is. It, the same with switchblades, right? Every bad guy in a movie is like flick. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a bad knife. Well, bad knife. <laughs> see, see, see the see the weird thing about it is like, see all these things in Scotland. You can buy them 
You can mm-hmm. buy them and you can have them in your house. The instant you leave your garden, you're breaking the law. How do you get That's it home? That's true here of a lot of things. So there's That's a lot a, that... of things we sell here as paperweights that are just bludgeoning weapons. And, and <laughs> like, like, like Amazon's got plenty of them. There's plenty of paperweight brass knuckles or like uh, blackjacks or um, what, uh, mm-hmm. all sorts of little bludgeoning tools and instruments. Uh, they're all illegal here. Uh, see, even like the spring buttons, like the police use, yeah. totally mm-hmm. illegal. Not allowed them. You're not allowed pepper spray. You're not allowed tasers. Not a cricket bat. Uh, a cricket bat for playing cricket. Yeah. Of You're course, that's that. what it's yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was it? What was it they say? Oh, if you keep a baseball bat in your car, also keep a mitt. Your lawyer yeah. will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so, I, and like, like if I'm ever showing up to beat somebody up with a baseball bat, I'm wearing my uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I got cleats on. Meanwhile, you're like 36 in. years old. You haven't played baseball in 18 years. It's like, it's like, it's like that gang for the world. Yeah, come at me. Doesn't right. Fit right. <laughs> I, I'm wearing that fucking like the whole uniform to court too. It came at me when I was playing ball. <laughs> what were you playing, sir? Dude. Irrelevant. It's my made-up game. Speak, speaking of weapons, because of, because there's a lot of street violence in Scotland, that's why it was like, oh, that stuff was like horrendously like illegal. You would get immediate time for it. But there was one big fight I was in because, like I said, you know, like youths, you know, we're from here. You're not from here. Mm. We don't want you here. And then the fight would start. Well, there was a fight where there was all of us and there was all of them. Everyone's everyone always goes like. Oh, why, why are you talking about shit like this on stream? This is Scotland. This is just what people did growing up. Like, mm-hmm. fucking, this is just the way things are here. But uh, a guy turned up to a fight with a stepladder, a little stepladder, like a little three step yeah. stepladder. And we are all laughing at him fuck? and pointing at him, going like that. What the fuck? What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? And everyone, and then we all charged in at each other. I got knocked out with a stepladder. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least, allegedly, I don't remember a fucking thing. I don't remember shit. Like, I just remember like sort of waking up like after it, and I'm sort of like, uh, like body jerking around and shit like that. And all my friends are going, "Fucking hell, fucking hell man, you, your head ate that fucking stepladder, man! Like you got <laughs> fucked up." Oh, you know, man, so, yeah. Gang in Scotland, just like rolling in office chairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Various things from the supply cupboard. People <laughs> going backwards. A staple. You're eating like like chicken legs, like but the bones are slightly sharp. <laughs> I do <laughs> like the idea that they all have staplers, <laughs> yeah. whipping them around like nunchucks, <laughs> like like they're the jets, you know, snapping at you, <laughs> with screen staplers around. I bet no, you guys fuck somebody up with a stapler. It's just the weapon. The weapon laws here are just like fucking so strict. Like firearms are just completely completely gone like none at all it's like you get people as well that go no you can like get a shotgun and you can get like you can apply for a license but like to meet the requirements it's just not possible the the only way that you ever meet the requirements for any type of firearms like pistols full ban pistols are completely banned you're not allowed them full stop but like you can get like a deer hunting rifle or a shotgun but the the hoops and requirements you have to meet are so strict that like nobody gets it. And in order to get those licenses, you would have to have never even breathed near a police officer in your entire life. Like mm-hmm. I got, I got, I got my. I, you see, even an air rifle, like a little two-two spring-loaded like yeah. air rifle, mm-hmm. you need a license for that as well. And my license got rejected, not for the Nazi pug stuff, not for the fucking fighting or anything like that, but because when I was seventeen, I was caught drinking in the street. That's so that, why my license This allows rejected. you forever from owning a hunting rifle. For something that happened like 15 years prior. So not, not even a hunting rifle, a 2-2 air rifle. This thing would give a yeah. deer a slight bruise. Yeah. <laughs> right? and just, uh, I mean, I'm fucking... pretty sure those are in the toy section in America. Yeah, if you shot yeah. me with that, you would hurt my feelings. Yeah, And then Woody would respond with a real weapon. <laughs> yeah. What do you be like? That's neat. Here's my gun. Like, <laughs> well, the, the reason the reason they got banned was this happened in Glasgow. There was firefighters attending like a building that was on fire, and everyone was crowded around to watch. And some dickhead was firing an air rifle at the firefighters, but then he he hit like this. He hit like this two year old boy in the head, and the oh. two year old boy ended up dying. And because of that. All air rifles absolutely banned. So basically, there was shit tons of hobbyists like all over Scotland 
and it was like a pretty expensive industry. It was pulling mm -hmm. in like a few million like every year and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But now it's completely utterly shut down because like I said, the, the hoops you need to jump through, the requirements, mm -hmm. like nobody could fucking meet them. But that was the plan. <laughs> like that, that was the plan, like to, to take yeah. everyone's fucking guns away. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that sucks. The knife thing, because they're really useful tools. Yeah, yeah like I've, useful got, I've got a little one of useful fishing and everything as well. But like, again, even if I'm fishing and I get caught with that knife, it's down to the officer's discretion. So I was gonna uh, ask yeah. about that. Like, are officers like, well, this guy's clearly fishing. It's a fillet knife. It, like, so some will be complete dicks. There are yeah. a lot of our police officers are like everyone talks about like police officers on power trips in America. Ours are so much worse, and it's a lot to really? do with the. It's, hard it's a to lot, be to a lot do. worse. Than what is well, worse about them? Um, <laughs> police officers in Scotland tend to be Protestants, <laughs> 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 which is us, which is us going back into that whole thing again. Yeah, and if you and if you've got an Irish last name, then you might be in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but really they've, so they, they they find somebody with they find an o'malley you know in the middle of the lake he's more likely to get in trouble than uh you know smith they they deny that shit happens they deny it happens but it, fuck, mm -hmm. it fucking happens it happens huh well that's fucked up yeah like not not being able to have knives is so fucking <laughs> foreign and bizarre because like when yeah. i when you think about a knife like what? What list? What? Where in the list? When you just think knife, what do you, do you think stabbing someone? It's so low. You think like, yeah. <laughs> when I think, it's like, yeah. I, I keep a, a knife that would be illegal where Dank is, right near my front door, and its only purpose is boxes. Yeah, only yeah. purpose is boxes. Oh my god! Right now, I, I hardly leave bed because my leg's broken. But normally, I use my knife every day, and it's almost all on Amazon boxes. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, something. It just it's out. removing such a utility. Like what? Yeah, Sometimes and also you need a knife. The concept of <laughs> a sharpened edge being illegal, I know, but the, like the concept of a sharpened edge being illegal is so weird. It's like outlawing subtraction. Like what? Yeah. No, this is cavemen figured this shit out. I don't well, know how you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the laws are there, but I'm guessing that it's illegal for him to have a knife that he doesn't need for work outside his home, right? Well, you, you missed what Dank said in that. Like, it's up to the cops' discretion. So if you have a as it should be that you use to pull the hook out of a fish's mouth. If that cop doesn't like you, he can arrest you while you're you fishing. You shouldn't have that. That can kill people because then what will happen is there'll <laughs> be the, the fucking... All of a sudden, there's, there'll be a gang called the Leathermen, and all they'll <laughs> do is fucking... Look, if you want to kill somebody with a Leatherman, man, you'll absolutely make it happen. A Leatherman is a sturdier knife than that green piece of shit there. But, well, yeah. what he was saying was that if you go fishing and you have... You know what a fishing knife looks like. Probably oh, yeah. the audience does too. It's mm -hmm. a special fillet thing, and it, it's, it's clearly a purpose-built fishing knife. It's up to the officer's discretion. If you, this is... You're on a... You're in a rowboat in this situation. The officer yeah, might be like, no, nah, I don't think you should have that knife. It's like, clearly this knife has utility for the, what I'm up to. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, sure there's going to be repercussion for you in the legal system down the road, though, right? You'll, you'll get to court, and the judge... We'll be like, ah, well, was he on a fishing boat? Yeah. Did he have fish? Yeah. Was he cleaning the fish with the knife? Yeah. I think he was, I think it's a fishing knife, officer. Yeah, but the thing is, you still get arrested and you still get fucking your, your knife confiscated and you still have to go to court and all that stuff. And that shit just shouldn't happen. It costs you money. I mean, yeah. It does, yeah. though. I mean, I got arrested for like carrying uh, that, that pistol that time. They're like, ah, your, your permit doesn't work. And it's like, you say so. I mean, you do have handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a gun also. <laughs> and you, Did you have a concealed carry? Oh, yeah. I was a thousand percent legal. Yeah. I didn't know if you were open carrying or something. I was open carrying, but it doesn't matter in Georgia. Like, like I have a permit to carry a handgun. <laughs> yeah. In North and, Carolina, you don't need a permit to open carry. Unless it's changed. I could be out of date. Concealed, yes, but open, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't a distinction here at the time. Like, like. Mm. I even made that point. I was like, open carrying is the more kind way to carry. <laughs> like, 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 as far as law is concerned, I'm like, mm. I got it out here for all to see. Mm -hmm. I'm not hiding the damn thing because I don't think there's anything wrong with what I'm doing. That's what I'm implying by my actions here. Sure. I walked into a Walmart wearing a Ruger, sir. Um, <laughs> if I thought if I was up to no good, I wouldn't have been playing fucking spyro yeah. in the in the video game section with my cousin all right and you I'd wouldn't have, been... have picked a georgia walmart because you're not the only guy there with a ruger 
We're in Hartwell, Georgia. Okay. Like my odds of getting out of here are slim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I start shooting, I'm not making it past, you know, you know, home. The, 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 oh, the good old boys in the in the parking lot are gonna slay me. Dude, you go to a southern Walmart parking lot at eleven PM at night, there's a crowd of guys out there who will gun you down. <laughs> It'll be a firing squad. They're, hoping, yeah. they're all in their <laughs> jacked up trucks with chew in their mouth trying to fuck some hillbilly. Yeah, and they That's all got part guns. of their culture and, it, and to be respected. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I didn't really think about a... how everyone else had one, but yeah. And in North Carolina, every so often I see someone open carry, but somehow they're able to vibe. I do this all the time, like mm-hmm. like especially the old guys. I, yeah, even I saw young ones open carrying recently, and they had this. Like, if you have a problem, this is really a you problem. I do this every day. Vibe about them. And they were like 24. And I was like, okay. I don't know. I just, it wasn't alarming because they didn't seem to give a fuck. No, I don't mind it at all. Um, and people try to make that a racial issue sometimes. They're like, oh, they're all about gun rights until we want one. And I'm like, I love seeing black people with guns. We want as many, as an ex gun owner, <laughs> we, want as, <laughs> we want as many black gun owners as we can get. We'd love for you to be part of the fun that is gun ownership. <laughs> like, like, like they're for defending your rights, and y'all need y'all y'all get your trample, uh, rights trampled on more than anybody. You shouldn't so you be able to vote well unless one. you own guns. <laughs> <laughs> They've got it. You know, you're close. Close. I have something similar where, where I can't vote for own guns. So you move those pieces around. We can we can we can double negative that back into some parlay it back into voting. Can you paintball in Scotland, or are they you can't airsoft and paintball too? Oh no, it's okay. We've we've got paintball here. There's paintball courses, but there's like rules for how you transport your paintball guns. Jesus Christ! And all that. Yeah, they're supposed to be in like special cases where it's it's meant to take you like a while to get into them. In case <laughs> in case I don't know, in case the police pull you over and you might want to give them a bruise <laughs> or something like that. You know, they might pull it out and give me an owie. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Stand you back. Guys- I'll pee, I'll peeve you off. I think he might be bipolar. I don't know. The nastiest, grumpiest person on Facebook flies a paramotor. Talk shit to everyone. He pulls my name out of a hat all the time. All the fucking time. It has nothing to do with me. And he's like, I bet fucking Matt Woodworth is going to come here and say something. Like, I haven't been in this forum in months. I hear that. Funny? I hear he's a real level headed guy. And maybe we should pay attention. <laughs> and then that that fucking asshole who does nothing but start <laughs> shit and talk down to people for years. Yeah, sometimes he loses his, his head. on the ground. <laughs> and he chops fucking part of his head off with Off the prop. top of my head, I can't <laughs> think of any issues with what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell him, no one likes this guy. No. <laughs> Nobody, He's deformed nobody, now. The local pilot. <laughs> What'd you say, Taylor? He's, he's deformed, deformed now. now. <laughs> but he's but it's almost like uh, a version of the Glasgow smile. It's showing, hey, don't trust this guy about <laughs> aviation tips because he's not reliable. Yeah, he's he needs one of those graduation caps. Yep. You know, just flat on top. <laughs> uh, so what, what was that? What is it? Do you mean like a paraglider or some shit like that? Uh, uh, Zach, can you pull up a picture of a paramotor? A cool a one. Par- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the coolest one you can find. <laughs> so it's like a paraglider, which I guess you know, except that there's a propeller on your back. So right. you can launch from flat ground and fly up, whereas paragliders have a, this is gonna be bad. Oh, that's a trike. Yeah. It anyway, that this one I think, I, know, I think I know what you mean, but it's sort of like strapped on your back like a jetpack kind of. Yeah, it's it's a backpack of. propeller. Eliminate the wheels and so the that, seat. that that dropped the top tippy's head off. So uh-huh. when you start it, top of it, if it goes wrong and it like starts at full speed, it jumps at you. And it's really hard to hold it back because it comes at you and it twists. So like like you're a strong guy. If you put your hand on it, you'd think you could hold it, but when it comes at you in twists and tips, even a strong person gets defeated by it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the amount of thrust they have is something like 130 pounds. So you're like, it's just hard, dude. 130 pounds on your best day. Maybe if it was a straight force, you could hold. But 130 pounds where it's twisting and pushing and you're getting yeah. your head chopped off, which well, is what happened. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah this guy just that he cut off that the Japanese head. Nobody more deserving just, than this. Asshole. It just, uh, it just topped him, so he's not dead. It just like took a chunk out of the top. Thank you.